Hey everyone, it's Jane. Today I want to talk a little bit about Iran <laughs> in books. I don't have a huge background with, well, really anywhere outside of uh, you know, the West as far as my reading is concerned. I'm a Western person and most of my reading is set in the US, the UK or Australia. Australia actually coming a pretty dismal third in that, in that list. However, I am really interested to, to learn a bit more about the world at large, which is what literature is fantastic for, and particularly about Iran, actually. Australia is home to many groups of people from around the world, and one of the most recent waves of asylum seekers that we've received here is from Iran. Um, I've actually, in the past year, I've had um, just a small amount of dealing with four Iranian guys who have been living in our neighbourhood while they wait to find out whether or not their application for asylum has been granted. Uh, I know, oh, clearly I'm not going to talk about their situation very much um, at all beyond what I've just said, but uh, getting to know them just a little bit has made me realise that I have a pretty cartoonish understanding of that part of the world. Um, it's difficult for me to think of the Middle East as anything other than a kind of undifferentiated mass apart from Israel, which is, of course, different, but there's Israel and there's everyone else. One of the things that these guys have um, communicated to me is that uh, Iranians, at any rate, consider themselves to be quite distinct. They have a, a heritage which is not Arabic. They have very strong links to pre-Islamic culture. Um, the, the biggest kind of, uh, the biggest day of the year, they're, you know, Christmas is not in any way an equivalent, but their, their biggest kind of cultural celebration uh, still, as far as these guys are concerned, is a pre-Islamic one. So they see themselves greatly in continuity with a culture that stretches back far beyond the Islamic Revolution and um, and so Westerners viewing them as a kind of, you know, crazy Islamic or whatever state is not just a, an oversimplification, but it's in fact a complete misunderstanding of, of their situation. And anyway, as I said, um, I live in a small corner of the world and I don't have any particular um, desire to troop around the world but books are a way to kind of travel without leaving home and I just wanted to talk about two um, books that I've read one I read last year and one one I've just read um, books uh, set in or in Tehran basically reading Lolita in Tehran the narrator uh, is a woman who uh, was a professor of literature, of, of English literature. And come the Islamic Revolution, she was no longer able to teach. The bulk of the book is set in um, amongst a, 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 a reading group, a book club, essentially, of, of um, younger people who, were, who had previously been her students at the university. And they study um, a number of, of works of largely Western literature. And the book concerns itself with themes that emerge from those books as read through the eyes of somebody in that situation, in their own personal situation. And that in itself intellectually is really interesting, looking at how different, um, how, how a text has different things to say to people in different situations. Um, 
of course, the other half of the story is all about these individuals and what's going on for them. Um, I had a, a bit of a mixed reaction to parts of the book. I mean, it's a very powerful read. However, the authorial tone uh, I found um, a bit challenging. And Azar Nafisi, um, who is the uh, protagonist of the book, the author of the memoir, and she makes it explicit that she has changed she has changed names and other characteristics and melded characters maybe and done all those sorts of things that you do in order to hide the identity of the people that she's she's talking about and so it's difficult to know how much these people map on to actual these characters in her memoir map on to actual people and there's yeah for me, it was an incredibly informative read. My reaction to it was was complex, and and maybe that's good, but it wasn't a it wasn't a straightforward thing. The second book that I want to talk about that I've just read, I have I have no none of those caveats um, for recommending it. Look, reading Lolita in Tehran, uh, you know, for anybody who's interested in the subject matter is is a really it's a grueling read but it's you know it's good it's very informative this one i have no caveats on recommending um it's been around for a few years so it's it's not brand new it's actually a comic um and it's all in black and white and the, the artwork is childlike in a way i mean it's not like it doesn't look like anything like one of my kids would draw or anything but it's it's simple and that's and that is um very fitting for the subject matter um because this is um virtually an, uh, an autobiography um from the ages of six um, which is before the Islamic Revolution uh, for this woman at, at the age of six to the age of 14. 14, yeah. I only read it two days ago and I'm struggling to remember. But, yeah, six to 14. By the time she was 14, her parents um, decided for her own safety to send her out of the country. In the story, everything is told from her perspective as a child it just runs through all your filters because she's uh, she's a kid, so she's uncomplicated about the way that she reacts to things. And you get passages like how she realises that she's, she's ashamed because her father wasn't sent to prison and... Um, and then she discovers an uncle who has been in prison and he becomes her hero. It's just, it's just, you know, it's really powerful. It's really, really powerful. I mean, I was a bawling mess <laughs> reading this book. Um, it, it may be that I was a little bit more um, open to this, to like, like had no barriers to this because she and I it turns out are almost exactly of an age and you know I didn't and so you're reading about stuff and she put some dates in and her age and I'm thinking through what I was doing at the same time and comparing that to what she and her family were going through some of the really great stuff in in this is it gives you by virtue of um, old members of the family taking her aside at different ages and trying to explain things to her, to, to bring her into the loop, to understand the world that she's in. There's, a, there's quite a lot of explanation of how different things led into other things. So why the Shah of Iran was there in the first place to be overthrown and who it was that was actually doing the overthrowing, which um, 
isn't it's not as though the Islamic revolution was actually um, the people who overthrew the Shah but they rise to power out of the ashes of a, a quite a different movement it's it's not a light read however it's it's as ungruesome as you could imagine it could possibly be as a um, a fair retelling of uh, the story of her life. There is actually a second volume, uh, which I, I borrowed this from the library and was sitting next to next, sitting next to it on the shelf, and I didn't pick it up, but I will absolutely make a point of it. And my understanding is that the second volume is her as an older um, person. I don't know how old because I haven't read this, actually returning to Iran. Persephilis, um, The Story of a Childhood by Ma Jane Satrapi. There you go. See you later. Bye.